And I come to realize that most people are like, Jesus is all about rules. Mm. They go to rules before they even go to relationship. Mm. As a church, what have we been communicating all these years? Have we just been communicating rules or have we been communicating one-on-one -on -one time with God? Mm. I think that's a great point because, um, yeah, without relationship, it just does not work. Right. right. It does not work. Yeah, so that's awesome. So a lot of the uh, whole Paul and Timothy story is a really circled around relationship, their their openness and their honesty to talk to each other about things uh, had to first start with a relationship. And then it came to, hey, remember God said this, remember God said that, let's start to bring that structure into uh, the relationship in this way and that way. And you know, I think it start, you got to start with the relationship and then really start to work on the structuring of of the other stuff that has to happen in the church in, in order to keep the order of the church. I think and also and, an easy thing is when um, when a person comes to know the Lord, I think the church should try to have some something set up where you automatically have them be attached with someone with, a, with its uh, Paul Timothy relationship. Yeah. I, I think that's so important so that that person can begin to grow in the relationship with the Lord. Also, when the person gets in a crisis that they were able to call and you're able to um, be encouraged by that relationship um, in the Lord. So those are some really good things I think that, that we need to have in place. And um, I, I think it will build in that person's life where well, they'll be prepared. So say, hey, you've reached your goal. Now you're going to be a Paul in someone else's life. Let me, let me ask you this from your perspective. In your experience, uh, have you come across a situation where you're the spiritual leader of of a situation and you see that you can match up people like you like you you see one guy who's very athletic and a, a young man who's athletic and you're just like you know what the two and two seem like they would fit you know hey bro why don't you go check up on so-and-so and just kind of see how he's doing start to build a relationship is it okay as a pastor to do that kind of thing um, because I noticed that in the church, not everyone has the drive to go talk to the next person on the other side of the church. Not everyone has the drive <laughs> yeah. to fellowship, and yeah. sometimes it kind of it's kind of like you gotta help push others to, you know, go to the barbecue. And I'm the perfect person <laughs> to help push them because I, I love being around. Our relationships is probably the key thing in my in my life. So I think that. Um, that's what I did even with small groups. Placing people in small groups is trying to put people in those groups that would really mingle together. Well. And, yeah, yeah. 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 Right, and right. so I think going back to that collaboration and the church working together in this idea of disciple making is so important. Right. Um, but it doesn't do nothing if the love part isn't there love. first yes yes you know because yes. then we're just clinging symbols right come on now. you know so yeah, we're right. just we right. we're just really trying to reposition mm -hmm. the heart of those who are supposed to be out there right paul i think paul is the one who writes in there that some of you ought to be teachers by now mm -hmm. but yet you are still Drinking uh, milk. yeah you're still going doing the elementary thing mm -hmm. and i think paul had that issue is he's like he's probably pulling his hair out like he's probably like mm -hmm. You guys are diverse in the word. You guys uh, know the apostles. Right, you guys right, know this. Right, and, right. and you guys should be the ones being the hands and feet of Jesus right now for this generation. As one and, preacher once said that um, some people are so constipated in the word of God. They have so <laughs> much word. Come on. They don't want to apply the word. They don't want to get and burn it off, right? They want to just sit and yeah. eat and get the word. And we've got to be outside the walls to see, to see the word um, being um, taken out. And I think uh, when I do a street evangelism and stuff, um, the whole Minutes with God effort out there on the streets is uh, talking to people and mm -hmm. questioning them in such a way that it makes them think. And I come to realize that most people are like, Jesus is all about rules. Mm -hmm. They go to rules before they even go to relationship. Mm -hmm. As a church, what have we been communicating all these years? Have we just been communicating rules or have we been communicating one-on-one -on -one time with God? Mm. You know, and it, it, it makes me wonder um, when I talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, like, what do you mean 
it, like did you miss the whole relationship part mm. why are you so mad at God because he told you something mm. you know but they wouldn't be mad or upset at God if you know they first had a relationship with God because they would know that his word comes from a place of love mm. and not a place of legalism mm. you know and so I think that's I think that's hurting the church in some ways and I think it's wisdom for the church and I, I just see that um, I see that being so needed in, in the times we're in we have a group of people a group a generation that have been uh, some people have been beat up so much where they think it is do's and don'ts but they don't realize that they have this righteous loving savior are you ready ready are you ready. too busy for god are you prepared for the afterlife is god an afterthought or your daily bread of life do you have the time for god can you spare some time with god this community network minutes with god don't get it twisted.